I've been a Kickstarter for the past three years, and I work with creators um, in helping them build their projects in st terms of going over uh, story ideas, rewards ideas, project updates, uh, social media strategy, and um, uh, press strategy as well, uh, and you know, dip into the project videos a little bit here and there. Uh, so before we get started today, um, and we're going to let the panelists introduce themselves in a moment, I did want to run through some stats. <laughs> that was Taylor. Uh, so film on Kickstarter, and I apologize for looking up here. Um, yeah, so we have had uh, over 19,000 uh, successfully funded film projects at this time. We should cross the 20,000 mark by the end of the year. Um, and uh, we've raised over 300 million uh, for film. Uh, for documentary film specifically, we've raised over 100 million dollars and, uh, and have had over 5,000 successful film projects to date. Um, and just thinking of, speaking of Doc NYC specifically, we've had 80, eight, more than 80 Doc NYC projects have come through Kickstarter and have raised 3.2 million dollars. So um, that's just a kind of a quick overview of documentary on Kickstarter. It is. Um, really within the film category, it is the strongest subcategory of, of, all, of uh, all projects. Um, so we have a lot of good, lot of good quality things coming through there. Oh, I skipped ahead a little bit. But yes, we've, we've raised over $100 million for a documentary uh, as of this July. And, okay. Please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Sharon Shattuck and I have a project uh, the final film is called From This Day Forward, but back when it was on Kickstarter in 2012, it was called Project Dad. It's a film about my, well, originally I pitched it as a movie about everybody's LGBT families, like everybody, you know, people across the country. I was going to go around and interview a lot of people and talk about their families. Um, ultimately, what I came up with is um, my dad is transgender and goes by Trisha now, and so I changed the focus and I made it a film about my parents' relationship because my mom and dad are still together. So, yeah. And uh, my name is Benjamin May, and um, I am director of a film entitled The Legend of Sweet Pea, which is having its world, world premiere tomorrow night, and then has got a closing night screening in this theater at 7.30 on Thursday night. Um, we ran a Kickstarter campaign for the film, um, I think it was in April of 2014, and it's about the New York City basketball legend and uh, former NBA player Lloyd Sweepy Daniels, who is from Queens and Brooklyn and is fairly notorious in New York, although I've noticed that a lot of documentary filmmakers <laughs> have never heard of him, but a lot of sports people have heard of him. Great. Um, so. We wanted to kind of go through the step-by-step -step process of creating a Kickstarter page and, and kind of talk, talk to two creators versus like me talking about it, um, kind of the mental process or, and the thoughts that go into creating each aspect of the page. So I think the first thing we're going to touch on is the project video. Is that right? Um, yes. So before, uh, I think we're going to watch uh, both project videos, but before we get started with those, I did want to just kind of touch briefly on um, project videos are actually very important to a Kickstarter project. And really, it's just important to have one, even if it's just you talking to a camera and saying, this is what I want to do. It's just important to, to um, be able to, I think especially in the film category, show people that you're actually able to make something, even if it's just a, you know talking to an iPhone and have some sort of visual movement. Now, of course, uh, and there is that, that is kind of the most shareable thing you'll have on your project is the project video itself, and it kind of is, is a way to show your creativity and a way to um, really pull people into your world and your story. So um, I wanted to ask you all, uh, before we show your videos, um, what was the thought process that went into uh, doing it? Because I think everyone has kind of a different idea. Sure. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think it's important to have, um, like you were saying, it's important to have a, like a personal aspect as well um, to kind of make a personal connection with the people who go to your page. So we actually made two videos. One was kind of an extended trailer, which we'll watch, which is not the official trailer. But um, yeah, you want to show s parts of the film, but I think almost more importantly, you want to have, and our second video was like a short interview of myself, which was you know only a minute long. You don't want to make these things too long. But just introducing yourself, say, saying why you're passionate about the project and why people should give you give you money 
And if, I think if you show some passion towards the project, people, because you know, with Kickstarter, they're really backing you because they don't really know what the story is like. So you have to make a personal connection with the people because they're like, I like this guy, or I like these two people who are in this video and they really seem like they're passionate about the project and they want to get it done. So I think it's important to have at least your face in there. Um, and then we did a trailer as well to kind of show people what the story arc was. Um, you said it really well. I mean, that's that's what, you know, I wanted to show that I was passionate, that this was a really personal topic for me, um, but also that I was a professional filmmaker and that I uh, I had done a piece for the New York Times um, on a similar topic, and so we used, like, a little snippet of that in the video. Um, I think our video in retrospect is a bit long, so I might, like, you know, give the symbol, but, um, you know, you'll see when you watch it. forgot to mention earlier. Um, the I, I uh, Personally, I try to... I generally try to stay out of giving people advice on their project videos because I do think it is like the one area where you can really shine with your creativity and really show your story on Kickstarter more than any other area besides maybe project updates. Um, but the, the one piece of advice I usually give is um, try to keep it three minutes or less. Now I think both these, these folks have a little bit longer, but I think that's fine. I, th I really don't think there's any science to it. Um, I think as long as like your video is engaging and, pull, and can pull the audience in and pull the, the potential backer in. Like, it could be, I mean, I wouldn't go 20 minutes, but I think four or five minutes is totally reasonable. I, I'd also say I made mine in 2012, and I would definitely cut it in half now if I made it now. I, I do think, um, so I, I've been at Kickstarter since early 2013, and um, I think at that time videos were averaging around three and a half minutes, and they have gone down to around two and a half. 245 now so it's just like slowly getting shorter and shorter for what that's worth um, so now uh, getting to rewards that's an, ver another very important part of a, of a Kickstarter project um, and the rewards are a, a way for you to invite backers in to um, it kind of take part in the experience uh, be, be that through um, in the case of a film getting a copy of the movie seeing the movie at a screening um, getting some sort of interaction with the subjects or um, or the filmmakers themselves, um, or some sort of like, um, I guess, special item from the film, uh, and uh, the, it's it's just the that's kind of the that is the point of interaction where, you know, the backer's going to come in, you're going to get your backer, and hopefully the backer is interested enough in the film after seeing the project video and reading the story section um, that they want to be involved in the project and um, pledge to the uh, pledge to what you're doing. So I think we have, we've pulled some examples of, of your, your rewards. Uh, mm -hmm. right. I'll let you talk about these a little bit and then I can go into some stats. Right, so um, I'm an animator and a graphic designer as well. And so some of, so I designed some stuff for, the, for potential award rewards. And um, I was kind of thinking about like, you know, at the time I was gonna go around and talk to all these other LGBT families, so I was thinking about a kind of a rainbow lens like on my 5D, <laughs> which is the camera I was using. And so that's where that design came up. Um, and then also kind of having, you know, different people of different colors seems like an obvious choice. Uh, my dad, Trisha, is a painter, so um, paintings were part of the rewards. And then, um, yeah, I, I guess that's pretty much it. Tote bags, you know, I, I did do like the physical merch, which I don't regret. It was kind of nice to like get those printed and, but I still have like a bunch of tote bags, you know? <laughs> so, if anybody wants to buy a tote bag, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, you know, one of the things you consider, um, you know, when you're making your gifts is, you know, you're gonna have to deliver on these gifts at some point. And so you really wanna be careful about, making promises that you can't deliver or that are gonna cause you major headaches later on. And I've noticed, you know, um, you know, supporting Kickstarter campaigns myself, I get, you know, people asking, and, you know, oftentimes I'm really just supporting the project and, the, you know, the gifts are sort of a bonus, you know. Um, but we were sort of, wanted to limit the amount of merchandise that was coming out. You know, we didn't want to make a bunch of pins or make t-shirts or something like that. So we were going to incorporate some of the artwork that we did into the film with posters. That was going to be one of our thing. And we wanted to do also experiential gifts. Like I think if you had a certain level, um, you know, like, tw like at $250, you could have a rough cut and you could watch the rough cut, the first rough cut and actually like talk to me about it if you wanted to, you know, have some input in it, into it, you know, and if we took some of your ideas, we'd put your name and special thanks in the credits. Um, not many people take you up on that, 
there was a friend of mine put in fifteen hundred dollars, and we had a f you know, and that was an offer for a full day of filming with us on the set. You know, I guess the take home for me um, was just be careful about what you choose because you're going to have to deliver on all those things later on. Right. Yeah, that's very well said. Um, yeah, uh, we we tend to encourage people. Um, I, I do think like as you if say if you're raising money for a hundred thousand dollar film, you're probably going to have to get into some sort of physical manufacturing and physical goods, but we do advise people to really think about what it is they're offering as rewards, and as much as possible, go digital, uh, be that a digital screening, a link to the film, a digital downloadable poster, something like that. For us, there are three uh, tiers we always advise people to think on including as a, as a reward. Um, <clears throat> the Have a kind of lower, uh, lower level entry reward of $5. Uh, that could be something like, um, Anything from like a thanks in the credits to video or to updates to access to behind the scenes or something like that. Just something like easy and entry level so you can, as a backer, if they see it, they might not have a lot of money or they might just be like marginally interested in it and they want to kind of follow along in the process of uh, and be updated about the film and where it stands. Um, just have something like fi uh, uh, the, the five, you know, dollar to ten dollar uh, rewards tier that's kind of not going to really tax the tax the backer too much. And um, what we what we found is 11% um, of backers raise their pledge over the course of a campaign. So um, you come in at that lower level. And uh, the one story I have that I always refer to is a filmmaker who made First to Fall, doc another documentary. Um, I think she has someone come in at $10, and by the end, they had raised their pledge to $1,000. Now, I'm sure that doesn't happen ever, probably. But that, that is like a nice story to draw to, like that one kind of easy entry reward ended up at a thousand dollars um the other i'll touch on the other two and ask you um the other uh one is a way to see the film at a reasonable price um in anywhere from a digital download to like a, you know a three disc blu-ray deluxe set or whatever it is whatever it is you're making uh and how you want to present it but think about somewhere in the 15 dollar to say 50 dollar on the high end range just a way for someone to be able to see the film that is as a filmmaker and as a film project on kickstarter that will be your most popular reward and you want to be able to price that reasonably. So people, uh, I mean, I don't know, people's, people, like for me at least, I see a film on Kickstarter and I want to see the film. Like I'll basically pledge to see the film at whatever level I can get it at. So you want to make that reasonable for people. You don't want to overprice it or outprice yourself. Um, and then the third level, and this is one where I couldn't necessarily say you always should do this, but it's a, it's a popular level um, that, that kind of pulls in a lot of money basically um, in the 80 to 100 dollar level um, and this is where i think on a per project basis it really kind of de depends on what it is your project is and what it is you're making and what you're able to offer um at that level so i'm wondering did you all have like rewards in each, each of those kind of tiers basically um, go ahead I'll start, sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I felt like, I think that we started, we had, we even went as low as a dollar, but I think it was a $5 minimum to get your name in the special thanks. Um, and it went all the way up to 2000. That was our top tier, and that was for one of Trisha's paintings, um, and also being an uh, associate producer, so getting an associate producer credit. So, but most people were probably $25 to $50 range. But we did a, a slew of awards between a dollar and $150. That was pretty, you know, that was pretty much everybody. Yeah, and just to add to what you were saying, I mean, you know, your Kickstarter backers become, you know, sort of the first big followers of your film, and they end up uh, really spreading the word of your film, you know, on Facebook, and they follow you on Twitter. And you know, even um, you know, they follow you throughout the campaign, and they're rooting for you. They send it to their friends and everything. So getting those like ten dollar donations, I can't remember what we had. I think it was a special thanks, but just getting those people in the door so that they're aware of your film um, can really help you. It's almost like an investment in the film because they start spreading it to other people, which lead to more donations and that sort of thing. Um, I think most of our donations landed in about the hundred dollar range as well. Um, but yeah. Um, okay, I will move on to project updates. Um, so project updates um, are a way for you to communicate with your backer community, um, not only while the project is live, but also 
uh, after the project, kind of keep them updated and, and you know let them know oh, my film's premiering at Doc NYC for for instance, or we're doing a rough cut screening or whatever it may be, or it's, it's out on DVD or it's in it's on VOD now. Check it out. How did you all use your updates? Yeah, so the updates, um, you know, when you're, and I don't know if at some point we're going to talk about like the preparation to, before you start the Kickstarter, which I think is probably a really important thing for everyone to know about. But um, like when your Kickstarter is live, it's really a um, kind of an all-consuming uh, sort of endeavor. And the updates are a way to sort of keep energy in the project going. I mean, you can't, like projects you see that fail are projects that, you know, they're three weeks in and there's no updates, you know what I mean? You gotta be doing like an update a week or an update every four or five days. And when you, each one of those updates, you don't just wanna say, okay, here's where we at our, you know, here, here's where we are in our goal. You wanna give them something. You wanna give them like a little, like a new little clip or a new image from the film or, you know, a snippet of an interview or something like that. Yeah, and so it sort of speaks to like the preparation of when you're, st before you start the campaign, you have to have this cachet of material that you're going to sort of start delivering throughout the process, you know, on different so and social media. And I don't want to overstep where the next topic is, but um, you really have to be prepared with a lot of material and you can't give it away at the very beginning. You know, you want to have some A-list material towards the end and you really have to have a plan uh, to keep that energy going throughout the whole thing. And the updates are a good way to do that, but the, th the same content that you deliver to your fans first you know, you start putting on social media as well, like a day or two later, you know? Yeah, let me touch on um, preparation, because I think that is kind of key for any successful Kickstarter project. Um, I had actually totally skipped out on that. Uh, yeah, you, the last thing you want to do is create your project and hit launch and then say, okay, now what am I going to do? How do I reach out to, how, how do I reach out to people? Um, ideally, you would give yourself some time anywhere from a couple weeks to, I, I don't know, I mean, I've been talking to some creators who have been planning a project for 18 months. Like, it really varies on on who you are, what your project is, probably what kind of personality you have, and, and how much time you can devote to, to it. But I, I don't think you can ever be over-prepared. Uh, I do think you want to um, basically once you kind of land on, well, we're going to launch in spring 2016. We're going to launch April 2016. It's going to be live for 30 days. Or it's going to be live for 40 days. Start working backwards and know, like, start setting the steps of, well, this is the calendar for that month we're live. This is what we're going to do day one. This is what we're going to do week one, week two, week three, week four, and really start planning it out. Um, you'll never 100% be able to plan out your project by any means. But um, you could maybe get 50, 60% of the way there. I think what's going to happen is once you are live, there are going to be other things that come up. Um, either backers will be contacting you, press will be contacting you, all, all sorts of different people will be kind of reaching out to you and wanting to know about the project. And also, you know, maybe you, you launch and you, on your, all your best laid plans don't necessarily work out how you want. So you have to be flexible enough to be able to rethink and regroup um, if, if that should happen. But um, really just preparing and giving yourself, map, mapping out the month you're live, I think is really important. And then, then you have like, you know, like you're doing April of next year, so you have the next five months to chip away a little bit every day and work on your contact list, work who you're reaching out to, figure out who, you're, who the organizations are that might be interested in your film or the um, different groups that might be interested in your film and who are those contacts and who, who's, who, what, are, what are press typically cover this kind of stuff? Who are those contacts? And really kind of get that stuff in line, but then also uh, start piecing together, well, we're gonna re release this video in week one, week two, week three, week four, so on. And you know, you have five months to kind of prepare that. So it's not necessarily a full-time job. It might be an hour to a day or something like that, or an hour to a week, depending on what it is you're doing. But it's really just preparing for that launch. Because when you launch, it's, it is gonna be a fair amount of work. Um, very few cases you can just launch and just sit back and let things happen. Um, that does happen, but I would say for the most part, be prepared to do some work. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's um, it's important to know you know where the money is going to come from as well. So, like you were saying, you want to have your contact list prepared ahead of time. You want to, and you want to create your Facebook page ahead of time so that there are people who are liking your Facebook page before your Kickstarter goes live. You don't want to be launching your Facebook page and trying to get people aware of that while your Kickstarter is going. You know, you want to have, I think we wanted to try to have like, 
you know, 700 people like our Facebook page for the film before we the Kickstarter went live, so that those people all saw the Kickstarter as, as soon as it was live. You know, so you want to create a little bit of a buzz about the fact that you're starting beforehand, and you also want to get a sense of where the money's coming from. You know, like bo the majority of it is going to come from people who are directly, at least this is. In my experience, we raised over $50,000. The majority of that, probably 75% of it, was through people who were in some way directly related to the film. And so it's about um, sort of uh, not being annoying, but sending, you know, using MailChimp or something like that to send out mass emails to your close friends, you know, mass e emails to the more distant friends, and then the people who you don't really know who are on your email list, send it to them as well. You can't be sending it every week, or I mean every day, but you sort of hit them up every week and you know things start to fall your way and you also and this is an interesting point that when it's live you have to really keep track of who you're emailing because you don't want to email your the guy who just gave you 150 dollars be like hey man you know can you send us some money because you know that doesn't really sit very well either so you have to be very organized on who's giving you money who you've sent emails to and who you who you've contacted and um you know when you're in the campaign and you're you're struggling the i think where you really reach out is when you can get outside of your social network and you can reach people who aren't affiliated with the film. Um, and we can talk about how to get there as well, but that's, you know, that's press, that's Twitter, there's other ways to get outside. Um, and I guess my question to you all, because I know, so, you know, your film's been playing the doc circuit right now and you're just premiering, so I'm sure you haven't done a ton of fulfillment on anything yet. But I just, I guess I wonder where you are in the process and, and the headaches you've <coughs> possibly experienced. Yeah, um, so fulfillment, so ful with fulfillment, um, we sent out like the merch stuff right away. Like as soon as we finished the Kickstarter, we put in the order for the tote bags and kind of got all that stuff out of the way because I knew that eventually it was going to be a huge headache. Uh, so the stuff we haven't delivered on yet is like the, you know, the digital copy of the film. Um, I, you know, I think when I was making the Kickstarter project, I kind of had an idea in the back of my head, oh, maybe we'd do this on, you know, have Netflix and do a broadcast with a TV, you know, channel and all that. Um, but now that we're actually like getting to that point, I'm realizing, oh, this is gonna be a while before these people can see the movie. And so that's something that, I think I estimated that they'd have the movie by like 2014 or something, <laughs> or maybe 2015, um, and that's not gonna happen, you know? So I need to send an update. But that, you know, um, as to what you were speaking about before, the updates are very important because they um, they sort of assure your backers that you're you're communicating with them. You know, if if there's a delay, you, you sort of um, allow them to trust you, and that you know things are going to be delayed. And all the film projects I've ever backed um, are delayed. Every single one of them is delayed. You know, like I think we were supposed to deliver our you know the finished film you know a year ago or something like that or you know so it's not unusual but as long as you communicate the fact that like oh you know we're premiering at Doc NYC this is exciting um, you know the DVDs of course are going to be coming later you know everyone's excited that the film's getting out there you know they just you know they're not worried about the fact that you're a few minutes late on the uh, you know on the DVD so um, so yeah yeah I mean really it's just again touching on it again basically keeping people updated and just letting them know because people understand and um, I think you're probably pretty right that the majority of projects, everyone starts a Kickstarter project with the best of intentions and I'm gonna deliver it in four months and that doesn't happen. And then just letting people know that you're, you're experiencing a delay but it will eventually come out there. And I do think like having the updates saying, you know, we're premiering here, we're screening here, like people are excited that the film does exist and they do know that eventually they will get their stuff and they, eventually they will have a chance to see the film. I'd like to add one thing I was thinking, um, and this is important prior to, to launching the film as well. If you're gonna launch a Kickstarter campaign, um, your profile is gonna be up there, and it's also gonna show how many films or how many projects you've backed. So you don't wanna be starting a campaign asking for $50,000 and you've, you've never backed another Kickstarter campaign, okay? So, but if, if you see someone who's launching a project and they've backed 15 other projects, you're like, wow, this is a generous person here. You know, this is someone who's giving, you know, I'm, I feel like giving to this person. You know, someone who's asking for 75 grand and they've never launched a project. It's always just a little bit suspect to me, but um, it's just one of those sort of, it's a little bit of a hustle. And I do think really, um, I think something that's good if you're considering doing a project, uh, it is good to back some projects. You put in a dollar just to be able to track the project and you'll get a sense of you know, what you like about creators and how they, like what you like about how some creators handle 
their backer community and updating their project and running their project and what you don't like. And you, by backing projects, you'll be able to get a really good sense of kind of what you like and what you don't like. So when you're ready to launch, you'll have a fairly good kind of base and opinion on, well, this is how I would do it. And you'll kind of be able to approach it like that versus just jumping right in. And, and again, yeah, like not saying that you have to back 100 projects by any means, but it does reflect well on you if you've backed some projects before you launch a project. All right, um, I think it's time for questions. You can tell pretty quickly when a Kickstarter campaign is not gonna succeed. You can tell almost, it seems to me, in my experience, that you know, within a few days or a week whether something's gonna happen. Um, because if the, pers if the person who launched the campaign or the team that launched the campaign is not visible every single day on social media, you're not bringing any money in. Because if people don't see it in front of them and you don't make it easy for them to donate um, money, the money's not going to come in. If you take a day off, you know, in the middle of the campaign because you're, you know, you're tired or you're burned out or whatever, no money's going to come in that day. And, you know, you got to make it easy for people to donate money, like with your Vimeo little links that you send out of footage you want to have at the end of that, you want to have a, a link that people can click on right away and donate money. You know what I mean? You have to make it easy for people right after they see the footage to donate money. So, uh, but yeah, that's something you can really tell when projects are, are struggling. Yeah, one thing, while the project is live, uh, you want to make sure that everything, be it your personal social media or even the page's social media or the, the film's social media, uh, everything is pointing back to the Kickstarter page while it's live. Now, once it's, once it's ended, that doesn't necessarily matter, but while it's live, you want to have shift all focus to that because that is where you want to have the most eyes and have the most chance of raising the funding you need. Um, she was asking um, if so. If you're starting social media ahead of ahead of the Kickstarter campaign, um, if you're early in the life of the film, and you might not, I, I would guess you might not have a lot of stuff to share at this point. Um, how much do you want to reveal on, say, the Facebook page ahead of launching a Kickstarter project, where you do need to have something to share? Um, I, I don't know. You, you, you just want to, it just has to look good, you know, a few nice images. You just want to spread the word. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have 500 likes on your on your Facebook page before you start. I mean, but you should have, when you launch the campaign, you should have, you know, you don't, it doesn't have to be a clip that you introduce every day. It can be a still. Um, it can be a, you know, a news story from the person's life, you know, uh, like a newspaper clipping, a link of something interesting. Um, not, you know, you don't necessarily have to have like fully edited footage, but, um, I'd say also um, with Facebook, I kind of like it when you're not only promoting your own thing. Like it's nice to link to other articles and just be like, oh, this is interesting. You know, try to loop other people in. Um, I didn't really post any clips from our film on the Facebook page. And I also say that we changed the name, we changed the title um, twice. You're only allowed to change um, a title on a Facebook page once, so we had to restart from scratch once we finally fit, you know, picked our, our final name. So just keep that in mind. It's really, really shitty. <laughs> yeah, I think the thing with um, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, any kind of social media, um, is, and you don't necessarily need to be like sharing your personal content. Uh, I, th I think when the campaign's live, you want to do the update to backers and then the update to your Facebook page or something like that. But ahead of time and even after, I think it's more about just being active within a community and active in the world. I, I would say you don't want to just launch a Facebook page and let it sit there. Um, and it, yeah, it definitely shouldn't be about me, me, me all the time. So I think the more you interact with, with the world around you on that page, I think is, is probably better than necessarily having to put up new content all the time. And speaking to that, just real quickly, I'll add, <laughs> get to your question because this is this is also a very important thing because when people are donating you want to shout them out like on Facebook or on Twitter and everything so that people see that they're being um, appreciated you know you want to be like thank you thank you thank you thank you you know th and you put people up on Facebook you tweet at them you know you do something like that so people know they're being appreciated so sure so uh, two questions one is a uh, talk a little bit about stretch goals and then uh, the second would be talk about films who might do multiple creators who might do multiple campaigns for the same film over the course of a film's lifetime. Um, so stretch goals uh, first. Um, I think I, I, the, my one bit of, we're fine with stretch goals. Um, my one bit of advice with a stretch goal would be I would not announce it until you actually hit your goal 
because it does look weird if I'm going for twenty thousand dollars, but if I do thirty, fifty, a hundred, you know, you start listing that on the page before you've got dollar one, it's just kind of strange. Um, but um, I would think about if you're setting your goal at twenty thousand dollars, but you could really use thirty or you could really use forty. What would that be? so that when you do cross your threshold, you can announce it. And because thresholds are a really good way to keep people incentivized to be involved in the campaign and, and keep kind of either spreading the word or, or people who are coming in for the first time backing the project. Um, because otherwise, you know, I think if you don't have the, if you don't use the stretch goal, um, uh, you run the risk of people saying, oh, they got their money. I'll see the film when it comes out. Um, on average, the average film project overfunds by 20%. So that's just kind of the, that's the stat of like kind of not doing anything, I think, in terms of setting a stretch goal. But the stretch goal helps you get there. And the one bit of advice I, w I would give with a stretch goal is you want to think about how will the stretch goal improve your film, not if we hit $30,000, everyone gets t-shirts because then you get into the entire headache we just talked about of manufacturing and shipping and everything else. So really think of using the stretch goal to make the best movie you can possibly make. Um, I don't know if you guys had any thought on that before I go. Um, um, what are the ramifications of backing a project in terms of maybe being taxed or are you now considered an investor? Um, that I don't know actually. I feel like that's not true, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I, I know several films that are gonna be showing next year that ran Kickstarter campaigns this year, so I don't know. Um, but in, in answer to your question, um, you can, uh, if you're a creator, you can file as a nonprofit and then your, as a backer, your pledge could be tax deductible. But I think most of the time people are just running campaigns as an individual and they're not doing that. So as a backer, you could, actually as a backer, you're just kind of, you're not, you're not at any risk of being taxed, I would say. You're, you're getting a copy of the movie or a copy of the thing. It's sort of like a transaction on Amazon or something like that. Um, uh, the, and then equity crowdfunding, which is something that is coming. Um, this is something that uh, Kickstarter, at, at least at this point, is not, um, it will not be participating in equi equity crowdfunding. It will remain as it has been, which is, um, you know, you pay 20 bucks, you get a DVD, you pay 30, you get a poster, whatever it may be. Uh, so um, at this stage, at least, we're not considering it. Um, and let me answer really quickly your question about the uh, running multiple campaigns for one film. Um, we have seen people do it. Um, uh, more often it's people running campaigns for like maybe two campaigns for the same film. We, I, I did see some person run four campaigns over the course of 18 months for the same film and they were successful every time. I think that was, to me that is a crazy stretch to run that many campaigns. But two is something that's kind of normal. You might run it for pre and post or production and post or whatever it might be. Um, and, and I think the, the benefit of if you do run two campaigns, what happens is the second campaign, you might not necessarily get everyone from the first campaign backing, but you already, you have a pro, uh, built, you've built your um, kind of base who are, who care enough about the film who've already put money in. So you, you're kind of building your evangelists and the people who are going to kind of get out into the world and help share the project. Uh, and it's kind of a, running the second campaign, you're showing them that you, you know, you're basically continuing on your path and you are hoping to make the film, you just need a little bit more money, whatever. But um, they're already invested at this point into helping you make this get there. So they might not come in financially, but they, they will come in and help spread the word. Okay, so the, the first question is, um, where, where did you all come into using Kickstarter? So we were about 50% through production. Um, and so we ran a Kickstarter campaign going for 50,000. Um, but that's another discussion to have too is like where do you how much money figuring out how much money you think you can get because um, that's a, a very important thing to figure out before you start but because we felt that that was going to allow us to finish production and actually go through post production the 50,000 ended up helping us finish production um, but then we ended up getting grants for the rest of it um, but I'm, I was happy uh, when we did it because we already had footage to show people. We had already started production, so I think that helped the campaign. And uh, being able to actually get to the rough cut with the funds from the Kickstarter, I think was really important to getting the grant money that then came in later. Uh, we were about, I'd say, 5 to 10% into shooting when we ran our Kickstarter, but I would say we're basically still in pre-production. Um, you know, in that, like, I was just going home and filming with my family at that point. Uh, 
so once we started, you know, shooting, that was with, I, we used the money from the Kickstarter campaign. And I think it was our only option at that time. I, I was a first time director, you know, feature director. And so I was having a hard time getting grants and I used that f funding to um, try to do some shooting and kind of figure out what the story was gonna be. Um, and then I did, you know, we had enough footage that I could put together short reels and actually get the grants I needed to, to go in and actually make the film. And then the second question about um, Kickstarter internationally. Um, yeah, so to back a project, you can back a project any in the, anywhere in the world. To be a creator, you do have to have a bank account in one of the countries we're available in. Um, and you know, so currently we're available in the US, a uh, better part of Western Europe, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, um, Yeah, I guess that's it. So in Western Europe would be UK, Scandinavian countries, Spain, France, Germany, Belgium, Switzerland. Um, so I don't know, a you know, fair amount of countries. Um, that's not to say that you can't raise funds in the US and shoot a film in Africa, that's totally fine. Uh, but you do have to have the, uh, the bank account in one of the countries we're available in. Yes, um, I, I gotta say, this is something that I always get confused on and I would, I would like to just, I'll probably, I'll talk to you afterwards, I would like to just refer you to our website and you can take, and you can read the information there rather than me misspeak about it. We took the, the Kickstarter funds and then we got, a, we got a really nice McKnight grant for the film as well. Um, so, um, I mean, I won't get into the specifics of the total budget, but from, you know, in one fail swoop, after we finished the Kickstarter and we had the McKnight grant, um, that was another 50,000. Um, we were able to actually travel, you know, and we, sh we filmed in, uh, we went all over Texas and um, we shot extensively in New York. But to be honest, like the, you can't underestimate the costs that are gonna go into editing the film and then uh, the archival material that you're gonna need to pay for as well. Um, the editing is actually the thing that ended up being the largest investment in our film after we had the story together. Because you don't want to have all this great footage and then just short yourself on the editing. So we can talk later if you want to talk more specifics. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and I think that you probably ran your campaign before we had a lot of these different avenues. Um, over the past couple of years, we have maybe even less than two years at this point, 18 months or so. Um, we, we have new ways of featuring. Before, I think you get a staff pick and that might have been it. Um, uh, like say three years ago, that would have been it. Um, now, and over the past couple of years, uh, we do have different newsletters um, that we're able to include creators in. Um, the staff pick, um, each, uh, each different category has its own landing page, and so we can feature you on that, like on the film page, or if you're doing a re you have a restaurant on the food page, whatever it may be. Um, aside from that, we have Facebook and Twitter and all the various social media items as well. Um, so it's not to say that we can feature every project because I think right now we have 900 film projects on site and I think probably thousands of projects overall on site, but there are those possibilities there. And um, you know, so me and the remainder of the film team do kind of serve as advocates within Kickstarter for film projects and, and put, that, put this in front of people there and say this is, this is what this is, this is why this is important, this is why you should feature this. So um, yeah, there are promotional avenues. You know, and, and um, we were helped by Kickstarter. We were, you know, made a project of, um, we were at the, the, the final day of our campaign, we were the Kickstarter project of the day. And, you know, like what I was talking about before is like accessing, fun, accessing funds outside of your like inner circle. That's really where you can start to kind of go gangbusters a little bit when you start reaching outside the people you know you. And getting featured on Kickstarter, that's something like that. All of a sudden you're starting to get donors who you've, you know, you've never heard of before that are interested in your film. And, um, but that's part of that is making a really good campaign because they're not going to pick your campaign unless it's really professionally done and they feel like it's succeed, you know, it has a possibility of succeeding. So the one thing I'll say for sure, and this is where the project video is important, you kind of have to have a project video to get any chance of being featured. Like absolutely you should have a project video. So um I guess she was asking um, how you sort of keep track of the people and the backers that you've emailed and how you organize that material. And I'm not sure about the scripted question. Maybe we could, is that about narrative films? Maybe, about narrative films. okay, so I'll answer the first question. So 
there are tools like you know Mailchimp where you can create uh, big email lists, and um, I mean you have to make make an Excel sheet. It starts with an Excel sheet of all the people you know, and then all of their email addresses, and you sort of keep track of it on that way. And you can put people um, using Mailchimp. You can send out um, you know mass emails, and you can, you can track actually um, how many people click on the email, how many people respond to it, and actually go to the Kickstarter site. But I just used an Excel sheet and just was like, oh, I contacted this person this week. You know what I mean? It's yeah, because you just really want to be sensitive to people because you're barraging them with your film, you know, no, <laughs> over I, that I month. Completely get it. That's why I was at Golden Ticket. There's no Golden Ticket. It's just uh, <laughs> it's part of the grind. It's a spreadsheets. <laughs> Um, and then in answer to your second question, does that also apply to scripted? I mean, really it does. I think the, the trick with, say, a, a narrative film versus a documentary is a documentary has a lot of, I, probably a lot more avenues of different organizations uh, um, that might be interested in, in, a, in, the, in the film or different groups, um, special interest groups or something like that, versus, say, a narrative horror film where you're kind of limited to, while well, making a, a horror, I'm making a slasher film. And so then you're thinking about, well, what is that audience? Where does that audience congregate? So it's just a matter of like knowing what it is you're making and then figuring out where that audience is. And then if you can be a part of that audience and, and interact with that community a little bit or longer before you launch your campaign, all the better because then you've built up credibility in, in, in that area, uh, wherever, it, wherever it may be, and people might know you by then or at least know that you're like liking Facebook uh, posts or whatever it might be, just like you're some, at least somewhat familiar to them at that point versus just coming out of nowhere. I ha we have time for one last question. I don't have anything. Yeah, Any? I mean, um, you know, I don't, I guess from my perspective, there was no problem having family members and people that knew you personally uh, donate through Kickstarter because that's going to allow, if people see a Kickstarter campaign that's going well, um, and you want to reach that goal, you're going to get more people donate money, and I think you'll raise more money in the end if people can experience it that way. I guess we reached out, not really to organizations, but we made friends in social media with other basketball sites. We contacted, you know, like different blogs, that sort of things, different newspapers, um, to see whether they were interested in, like, tweeting for us. We tried to make those friendships and contacts ahead of time. But uh, Yeah, I also, my film is, you know, a little bit more of a social issue film, um, although it's not like a straight social issue doc. But we spent some time forging relationships ahead of time, and, and we're continuing to cultivate those relationships now. You know, we're, we're going to probably launch a grass, grassroots screening campaign um, in January, and so we're, you know, still forging new relationships. And if I could go back and do it again, I would spend more time up front doing that um, rather than launching sooner. Um, yeah, and just to touch uh, on the friends and family aspect of it, I do think friends and family are important, and, and they don't necessarily, like, I know you don't want to ask your you naturally don't want to ask your friends and family for money. I, I totally get that. But even if they're putting in a dollar or five dollars, whatever it may be, like the the um, perception of the random Kickstarter person, or say if you are in the process of getting an organization on board, um, the perception of a of a campaign that's succeeding that has say a hundred backers and has raised X amount of money, um, even if it is like a hundred of your of your relatives. You know that that helps you in the long run reach those larger kind of audiences that you don't know. So I think there is an importance to the friends and family aspect of it. So you don't necessarily need to say everyone give me a hundred dollars, but everyone give me a dollar, and you're just building your backer numbers, and it, it it pays dividends later on. Yeah, just leaving with one final note that really worked for us. I mean, well, actually two things. First of all, it'll be really quick. It's very important to have a team of people working with you on the Kickstarter. You can't do it alone. So you have to have a team of people to help you out. And secondly, as far as your friends and family thing, I was actually on, you know, instant message people on Facebook directly and be like, you know, hey, buddy, can you, can you donate 10 bucks or do you want to throw in some cash here? And that was, uh, I mean, that was really, I mean, we raised thousands of dollars just, just that way, you know? So don't be afraid to do it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, I want to okay. thank you all so much. Thank you so much, George, for jumping in at the last minute. Sharon and Ben, thank you. Um, I want to thank Kickstarter um, co-presenting with us.